Welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm with Steven Taylor, our resident expert, if you will, in the boiler side. Well, obviously, Boiler University is kind of on our mind right now, and we're talking a little bit about safety, and I thought, well, let's talk about low water uh, in a boiler. Stephen, what happens actually when low water happens in a boiler? What, what well, is going you, on? You think about the, um, the water is used as a heat transfer. It's also an insulator. Mm -hmm. So you have the hot gases going through those tubes, and if that water level drops down and, and it stops insulating that tube, the tube overheats. When it overheats, it's going to fail. Okay. Um, lots of damage kind of comes from low water, yes. including some catastrophic stuff. Yes. Um, w why does it become catastrophic? If it gets low enough, and we'll, we'll be able to look at this a little later, and exposes the Morrison tube, which is the main fire tube, then that fire coming through that tube will overheat that steel and the steel will fail. It, it will droop and, and fail. And most of the time what happens when they have a catastrophic failure is when something happens, someone turns the water on, whatever, and you've got that thing that's super, superheated mm -hmm. and you inject water into it, that water turns to steam immediately and boom, you just have an explosion yes. so everything takes off. And typically on a fire tube boiler like this, it's kind <clears> of going it, out the, out the, the ends of the, the boiler. The door goes one way, the boiler goes the other. Right. And if you've seen some of the videos on the internet, you can see some boilers go some pretty They decent. go through the wall, yeah. across the field, through buildings. They, they do a lot of damage. Yeah, it seems to be just a lot of destruction that happens on low water. It is. Um, so when you have uh, low water, there's obviously damage to the boiler. What type of typical damage would you have to where the boiler doesn't blow up, but you got to have a service t company come in and actually fix something. Yeah. What is that? T typically, the, the least amount of damage is where it loosens the tubes up, will crack tubes, and then you have water coming out of the boiler, and they, they call in a tech, say, hey, I've got water coming out. What's going on? They go in there and look, and they can see by the coloration of the tube, discoloration of the tubes, that they've had a low water instance, and so those tubes are overheated. They'll be warped, drooped. They'll have cracks in them, so then they've got materials got to be replaced. So pressure vessel guys come in, cut tubes out, put new tubes in. Sometimes they'll have cracks in the Morrison tube or in the tube sheet. Those have to be ground out, inspector brought in, go through all the code procedures to do the repair properly. Okay, well obviously it's, it becomes a problem um, and, and we know about that as a, from a boiler manufacturing standpoint. What are they doing to actually prevent low water, what are we doing on a boiler? Yeah, we've got two, two controls to stop that, prevent that from happening. One is here. This one, this is a dual control. It controls the feed water valve to keep, let water come in the boiler uh, as the boiler uh, calls for water. The other, which is here, is the, is the first low water cutoff. So this is the okay. first safety device. If the water drops below here, it will shut the boiler down. Okay. Something happens and typically what will happen someone hasn't been blowing this column down. So this, over time, will fill up with sediment. And that's just a float ball in there. That sediment holds that bulb up so it can't make this switch in here to shut the boiler down. Then we have a second low water that shuts it off about here, and that's the probe in the top of the boiler. Okay. If the water drops off that probe, same thing, shuts the boiler down sends, and, and sounds an alarm. So that, that probe actually is sticking down into the water and yep. as the water drops below that... As soon as it loses right. contact with the water, it opens a, opens a set of contacts up and that shuts the boiler down. Okay. Why don't we go and check out our cutaway mm -hmm. and we'll actually be able to show you a little bit about where the water actually is in a boiler and then where that cutoff would be. Yep. All right, well, we're here with our cutaway. Um, this is going to really be a good visual where you can actually see the, the water level in the boiler. Something that is a little bit different here, though, we had our, uh, our Warwick uh, probes. We had different probes the way that they were looking at the low water and everything. This is a little bit different in the water column. Yeah, that was a McDonald mill with a float type control. This is an auto flame that just has probes in there. It's conductivity probes. Okay. Now, first thing we would do, just looking at water level, is the sight glass. First thing, look at the sight glass. That's the visual, the only visual you have that tells you where the water level is at in the boiler is just looking there in that sight glass. And typically it's going to be just about the middle of the glass work by code. That's where they want the water level to be. Okay. Um, now, why don't we go inside the boiler here and maybe show where that water level is actually at. Yeah, typically the, the normal water level 
it's going to be right in here mm -hmm. in that three four inches above the tubes mm -hmm. the first low water cut off is going to be about an inch above those tubes the second low water cutoff is going to be right at the top of those tubes, just a, just a shade above the top of those tubes. Okay. So by the time the water hits the top of those tubes, the boiler should be down. It's just kind of a goofy question. Can you have too much water in the boiler? If you have too much water in the boiler, you're going to shove water out the header. Instead of steam out the header, shove water out the header, and that's catastrophic to the steam system. Right. You have water hammer and it, it rips steam pipes out. It's awful. So the uh, controls, obviously, that are on the boiler are pretty important. Um, why don't you walk through, if a service technician comes out, you know, how can they actually check those, those low water cutoff um, to make sure that they're operating? Yeah, typically what they'll do on, on the primary low water cutoff, the first low water cutoff, they'll open this blow down that drops the water out of this water column and, and they'll sit there and watch it and it'll shut the burner down. That's the first way to test if, it, if it's working or not. Then for the second low water cutoff, it's typically in the, in the top of the water like we saw there, they'll either shut the feed pump off or shut this valve off, open the main blow down, watch the water in the glass, and by code, that second low water cutoff has to engage before the water gets out of the sight glass. Okay. So they'll just, they'll just watch that, that that's with, with the boiler operating, watch that water level, hold that valve open, and then when the boiler shuts down, they'll shut it off, open this back up, the boiler will cycle and come back up online. Then they've checked both low water cutoffs. Typically, how long do they, or how often do they do that in the, in the year? Uh, most places won't do it once a year if they're lucky. Okay. They need to do it at least once a quarter. This one needs to be checked every day. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got to blow that thing down, that needs to be done every day. Um, but typically, they, they don't do it nearly as often as they should. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously fail-safes on the boiler with your mm -hmm. relief valves and things like that. But the, the, these low water cutoff controls are <laughs> crucial. Absolutely um, crucial. To something catastrophic. And we want to make sure that people are um, checking those. So, okay. Anything else you got? That's it. All right. Well, we appreciate Stephen always stopping by. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Appreciate Stephen stopping by, talking with us a little bit about that low water in the boiler. Now it's October, winter's coming. Make sure you're getting out there and checking everything on that boiler and getting ready for the winter. And don't forget the low water cutoffs. Well, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, maybe subscribe to the YouTube channel and share a video for us. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.